If you have low back pain that is aggravated when you bend backwards, it might be due to facet joint problem. Last week I published a video of low back pain that is aggravated by bending forward, which is probably caused by lumbar disc disease. So the positions and exercise that we recommend when your pain is aggravated by bend backwards are basically the opposite of what I taught last week. The facet joints are these small articulations between the two vertebras. They are localized in the back of the spine, while the discs are localized in the front of the spine. These facet joint articulations can have inflammation and arthritis. The same arthritis that can affect our hands, hips, knees, feet, can also affect these facet joints. When you bend backwards, you put pressure on these facet joints. The upper vertebra will compress the lower vertebra and squish the joint in the middle, and this can cause pain. There is a way to find out if your low back pain is coming from the facet joints or not, and I will explain this at the end of this video. So today I will show you the four, four, four methods to treat facet joint pain. This includes four resting positions to alleviate the pain, for exercises to alleviate the pain, and for activities that you should avoid. So let's talk about facet joint pain today. If you hear a cracking noise when you move your spine, it is probably coming from the facet joints. The same sounds that your knuckles make when you crack them, like popping or snapping, can happen in the facet joints. The knuckles, facet joints, knees, ankles, hips, they are all what we call synovial joints. This means that there is a capsule around the joint to keep the lubricant synovial fluid inside. This fluid contains gases like oxygen, nitrogen, and carbon dioxide. When we pop or crack a joint, we are stretching the capsule and the gas is rapidly released. That's why we need to wait hours to hear the sound again, because the gas has to return to the joint. It is important to remember that cracking the joints and hearing the popping sounds in your spine or any other joint is not damaging the joint. However, if you feel pain when you crack the joints, then you need to talk to your doctor. There are other things more serious that can make noises around the joints, like the tendons. If the tendon moves position when you use the joint, it may do a snapping sound. Another reason for sounds is if the joint has a severe arthritis and the bone is rubbing against bone or a rough surface because they lost the cartilage to protect them. So for tendon snapping sound or for from bone on bone grinding sound, you need to talk to your doctor to check if there is something you can do to avoid further damage. So let's get started. First, I'll show you the four positions to alleviate the pressure on the facet joints. So this is the first position to alleviate the pressure of the lumbar spine and also to reduce the lordosis of the lumbar spine, which is this curvature that we have here. So lie flat on the floor or on the carpet or on a mat, put a pillow under your head and then grab a chair. You're going to put a, your knees here. So the idea is that this is 90 degrees and then you're going to start bringing the chair close until your knees are above your abdomen. When you reach this position, see if the lumbar pain is alleviated and you stay in this position for maybe 5 minutes, 10 or even 20 or 30 minutes. If your pain, if you're having a acute low back pain caused by the facet joints or even by lumbar disc pain, this is the Z-lie position that is good for pain from the facet joints but also good for pain that is originated in the lumbar discs because this relax the pressure on the discs, relax the, relieve the pressure on the facet joints, 
and you can stay here you can be reading a book watching a video or meditating and this is equivalent of taking a painkiller because it's so good and if the floor is too hard you can put a match but don't put any pillow under your lumbar spine because you want your lumbar spine to relax flat and relieve the tension now if this is causing pain then don't use this position this is the second relieving position if you have a mat it's more comfortable you can put a pillow under your head with your feet flat on the mat you're going to start bringing one leg at a time it's easier if you do this bringing the knees to your chest and when you reach this position here you're going to wrap your arms around your legs and try to relax as much as you can so when you are doing this you are decreasing the lumbar lordosis again that curvature that we have here you're relieving the pressure in the facet joints of the lumbar spine and try to stay here for five minutes then if you can't in the first time just stay there for one minute or two and start increasing the amount of time that you are there but try to relax the most important thing is to relax your muscles you're going to find relief from this position if you're having pain from the facet joints so this is another position to relieve the pressure in the facet joints it's called the child's pose or prayer stretch so you're going to be kneeling on the mat or on the floor and you're going to start going slowly on the ground and try to keep your shoulders apart and your hands stretched out in front of you and touch with your head on the ground or the mat when you're here try to find a relieving position that you don't feel any pain and when you you find that position just stay there one two minutes or five if you can remember to breathe you can be doing your breathing exercises your meditations this releases the pressure of your facet joints and come back slowly so you don't feel dizzy when you finish so this is the sitting flexion position you find a chair and with your feet flat on the ground open your knees approximately the same width of your shoulders and you're going to go down 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 and see how much you can go if possible to the level that your head is at the level of your knees and your hands are touching the ground so you are bending your trunk find a position here that doesn't hurt and stay there try to relax your muscles when you're doing this relax your neck breathe slowly Stay here for maybe one or two minutes as much as you can because this is going to relieve the pressure on your facet joints. Come back slowly because you may get dizzy when you come back. Schedule some time to do the activities and alternate with time to rest in between these positions second i'll show you the four exercises to improve the pain from the facet joints this is the pelvic tilt exercise which is an exercise to flatten the small of your back or the lumbar spine or the lordosis the lumbar 
spine has this curvature called lordosis and some people they have a hyperlordosis too much of this curvature and in these people they can you know if this curvature is too much you can even put a, the whole arm under the lower back when they're lying flat lying down like this that's not good because that will put a lot of pressure on the facet joints so we need to flatten and relax. How do we do this? Is with this pelvic tilt exercise. So lying down on a mat with your feet flat on the ground, your knees apart the same width as the shoulders. You're going to turn upwards. Try to see if you can feel all of the bones of your lumbar spine touching the ground. If not, I, I know some people will not be able to do this because they have a big curvature. That's fine. So do this movement of your pelvis going up and down. Like if you do this backwards and forward. You can also do this on the wall. If you stand against the wall, you can also do this but on the floor it's better, it's more efficient. And do this eight times, and then increase to 12 and to 20 times. So when you're doing this, especially when you are going backwards, that you can feel the bones here relaxing, that's excellent because you'll be putting less pressure on the facet joints. So that's the pelvic tilt exercise. The other exercise is the dead bug. So for this one, it's the same position, lying down on a mat with your feet flat on the ground. We are going to raise our arms and raise our legs. And when you do this, try to adjust the lumbar spine to see if you can, if you're touching with your small of the spine here, the lumbar spine, if it's touching the mat. That's the most important thing, that when you do this exercise, try to feel if your this area, the lumbar spine is touching the mat all the time when you do this exercise. So with your hands and arms up, we're going to alternate. So the right arm goes this way and the left leg goes this way and come back. Now the left arm goes back and the right leg goes down. Don't touch the ground, stay here and pay attention when you are doing this movement that your lumbar spine is always touching the ground. If you never did this exercise, you may do only with the legs the first time, you don't need to do with the arms. So straight your legs, don't touch the floor and bring back and the other one and back. And you can do this 10 times, it, and increase to 20 each leg and then 30. Always the most important thing is to remember, pay attention. If the bones of your lumbar spine are touching the ground, they're flat. Because if you do this and your lumbar spine goes more curvature, you're not going to help. You're going to make it worse. But if you do this exercise right, it's excellent. It's amazing to relieve lumbar pain caused by the facet joints. In my case, if I don't do the dead bugs, I feel my back pain coming back very quickly. So what I do is you would do this with the arms and you keep doing alternating right arm, left leg, left arm, right leg and you keep doing this. I do this usually for one minute, and in one minute I can do 40 of these dead bugs. The other exercise is the bridges. So for this one, also use a mat, keep your feet flat on the ground, your knees open apart. You're going to contract your abdominal muscles and your lumbar muscles as you raise from the ground. And when you do this, you're going to feel that you have to contract the glutes and the abdominal to stabilize this position. So what we do here is you're going to press 
against your heels, the heels on the ground. And then here you have to be flat and straight like this. And now contract your glutes, contract the abdominal muscles and stay in this position and lower and up, lower and upper. So keep doing this for maybe eight repetitions. When you get good at doing this eight, you can increase to 12 repetitions every day, and then you can increase to 20 repetitions every day. So this is good. Always remember, contract the glutes, contract the abdominal, and press your heels against the floor. That's the bridge exercise. This exercise is the bird dog. So the exercise is you're going to alternate. You're going to raise the opposite arm and the opposite leg, and you're going to alternate that position. It's important that you do not curve your spine too much like this or sag like this. So try to keep it straight all the way when you're doing the exercise. So what we do is one, and when you go here, keep your head low, your arms straight and your legs straight. Bring back here and now the other side. And two. And the other side, two. And three. Make sure that you are contracting your abdominal muscles when you do this, your glutes. And keep repeating this for maybe eight times each side. And when this is easy, you can increase to 12 and increase to 20. So this is the bird. And here, bird flying, and here the dog. Bird flying, and the dog. Now, I'll show you the four activities that you need to avoid if you have facet joint pain. So it is important that you remember how to get up from a sitting position when you are in a chair, on a couch, you cannot do this, just get up like this, because if you do it, you're going to bend your lumbar spine and then you're going to extend backwards and it's going to hurt. So what we have to remember is if you are sitting and you want to get up, there is the right way of doing it. And this is you get close to the edge and when you are here at the edge, you may even turn on your side slightly and you're going to use your quadriceps and your hips instead of bending your lumbar spine. So pay attention to my lumbar spine. I'm not going to bend. I'm going to use my hips and quadriceps. So now I'm going to show you how to get out of the bed because this is really important. If you just bend your spine and get up, it's going to aggravate your low back pain. So the right way is first you turn on your side and get close to the edge of the bed when you're on your side. And when you're here close, just drop your legs outside of the bed. And with your hands, you're going to increase here to up, go upright in the upright position, you see? And then your legs are outside and you are sitting. Now to get from the sitting to the standing position, you move close to the edge of the bed. And here you're going to use your quadriceps and your hips and just stand up. So if there is an object that is lower, like in your kitchen, in the lower cupboard, or something that you have to pick from the floor, you cannot do this. And I see a lot of people doing it. And if you do this, look at all the movements that you are doing with your lumbar spine. So you're going to bend back forward, bend backwards. You're going to aggravate a pain caused by disc. You're going to aggravate the pain caused by the lumbar facet joints, and it's going to aggravate your lower back pain. So the right way of doing this is using your quadriceps. And you need to practice this. If you practice, you'll be doing it easy without bending your lumbar spine. So if you have to grab something on the ground or get something 
in a lower cupboard or drawer, you have to bend your knees and hips. You see, so there's less movement from my lumbar spine. So you do this and you want to put something on a drawer and open and close. Even for people who are gardening, if you're gardening and you have to go down, lower, you, if you have to pick up things from the ground, always use your knees and hips. And the more you practice, this gets easier because a lot of people don't do this kind of uh, exercise and their quadriceps are weak, so they tend to lose their balance. So that's why it's important to do squatting exercises and practice your squatting because then your quadriceps will become stronger and stronger. Avoid sports that aggravate your pain. In some people, that may be golfing or some types of swimming. It depends, each person is different. If possible, change your sport and practice another sport that does not aggravate your pain. Once the pain is controlled, stretching and strengthening exercises can be initiated. I find that muscle weaknesses and shortened muscles cause myofascial pain, and this is a very important factor that perpetuates the chronic pain. We call this myofascial pain syndrome, and I have another video for that. Another kind of treatment that people may try for facet joint pain are injections, nerve blocks, and nerve ablations. There is still not a lot of good evidence that these procedures work. They involve some risks and should only be performed by someone who has the credentials, training, and skills to do these procedures. I had recommended some of my patients to go and have these interventional procedures. And in some cases, it really makes a big difference. However, the result seems to be temporary and only last for a couple of months. These injections or nerve blocks are useful to tell if the pain is originating from the facet joints or not. Because if the low back pain is alleviated after these procedures, then at least we know that the pain is coming from the facet joints. If these procedures do not reduce the pain at least 30%, then you can stop with these procedures because the pain is probably coming from some other places in the spine. I found that patients who lose weight, at least 10 pounds, get a lot of relief from facet joint pain. That might be because they're putting less pressure on these joints. Many patients ask me about back braces or lumbar supports. I don't recommend them for facet joint pain. I do recommend lumbar supports for other conditions like spondylolisthesis, which is a sleeping of one vertebra over the other one, or for people who had a recent fracture of the spine, like osteoporotic fracture. For people who have facet joint pain, if they want to use a lumbar support, then they should not use for more than four hours a day, and they should take it out and strengthen their core muscles because using the supports cause muscle weakness. In the comments below, please write down if you have facet joint pain and which positions and exercises from this video are working best for you. Also, in the description of this video below, you may find a summary of these positions and exercises that you can download and print to do at home. Please don't forget that this video is for educational purposes only. If you have a condition that needs medical advice, please talk to your doctor. And if there is an emergency, please go to the nearest emergency department. If you like this video, give a thumbs up there, turn on the notifications, subscribe to this channel. You can also find me on Twitter, Facebook and Instagram. Thank you for watching. Bye.